Welcome to a new video and this one I'm going to show you how you can create a video subscription membership site with Django and so this video is just going to be an overview of what the finished product looks like so let's just jump in and take a look so the first thing that we're showing here is the course list view and so this is just showing all the courses that there are on the website and if I go to one I can see all the lessons associated with that course so here we can see lesson number one and number two and this is a free course so if I go to it I can see the videos associated with each lesson and that's no problem if I go to my profile then I can see what type of profile I actually have meaning the type of membership I have and here it says I have a free membership since this date that I've joined and so I don't have any membership plan just yet so if I were to go to the Nginx course, which is a paid membership, then, or requires a paid membership, then it would show this checkout memberships button instead of the actual video. So if I go to that and select a certain membership, so for example, let's say I want the Enterprise, I can select that, and here I'm, I'm being shown this Stripe generated form. So if I enter in some credit card information here, which is just dummy information provided by Stripe. Then it also shows me the enterprise as the selected membership, the price as well. So I'm actually just going to copy this. And if I cancel and go back and select professional instead, now it tells me I have professional as the selected one, the price is updated. And now if I enter everything again and submit the payment, now it's actually going to create that membership on the Django backend and as well as in the Stripe backend on our dashboard. So here the token is created. We get this notification telling us that the membership was created. It tells us here this is our current membership as well. So now if we go back to home and we go back to one of these courses, the Nginx course, this might be, oh, there we go. Okay. So it says, welcome to the course and the video is displaying. We can play it and everything. And if we go back to the admin, we can go back to our user, check out the user membership. And it tells us we have a professional membership with our Stripe customer ID. And if we go to the subscription, it gives us our subscription plan for the specific user and we're active as well. And we can go to our Stripe dashboard. And if we actually just refresh this, Now you can see that the gross volume has increased from the previous amount that we just had. And so this is just kind of confirming that this payment was actually made, which is right here. So that is the actual course. This is what we're going to be building in this one. I hope you enjoy it and join me in the next lesson where we get started. Welcome to the second video for the video membership site. In this one, we're just going to walk through the requirements for the project. So the obvious requirement would first be Python. If you don't have Python installed, you're going to want to install that first. That's pretty straightforward. Just go to their website and download and follow the instructions. And then from there, you're going to want to create a Stripe account. And if you haven't watched my previous video on Stripe payments, then be sure to check that out in relation to the shopping card video as well, which will be linked in the description of this video. Once you've created a Stripe account, you'll want to go to your dashboard. And what you'll do is you go to developers and then API keys. And here in your API keys, you'll have a publishable key and a secret key. These are the two important things that you need to get started with Stripe. And if you need more information on this, again, watch the Stripe uh, implementation video. And so once you have these two set up, Python and Stripe, then you're going to want to go into your terminal or command prompt, create a folder and get started. So here I'm in my projects directory. I'm going to make a directory and we'll call this video service. I'm going to change into that directory, list everything out, there's nothing. And so we're going to start by creating a virtual environment. So I'll say virtual env env. Env is the name of my virtual environment. And so this command just creates it 
And so we'll just be using this to store all of the Python libraries. So we'll just activate this now. And inside here, we'll say pip install Django. This will install the latest version of Django, which is 2.07 now. So there it is. Right, so now Django is installed. I'm just going to clear this out. And we'll say Django admin start project. And we'll call it video service. Okay, that's not valid. So video service without the dash. Right, there we go. Now if we list everything out, we have this video service folder right here. And I'm going to now open this in Sublime Text. And then we'll work from there. Right, so here in Sublime Text, I've opened the video service folder where I created the video service project. I'm just going to rename this and call this source, which is basically signaling that everything inside here is our actual code. And then we can actually get started. So once you're at this point, then we will continue with this and actually jump into the models of our first app in the next one. Okay, so in this video, we're going to be brainstorming what the actual models are that we're going to need in this project. And the reason that we're doing this is because essentially your Django project always comes down to the models. It's the first thing that you always do because it's describing the data that you're going to work with. And so when you get it wrong in the beginning, it's quite annoying because you always have to go back and change names, add things, and it, it just becomes very repetitive and irritating to work like that. So it's important to get this right from the start. And so that's what we're going to do right now. We're going to plan and work through the actual logic of what the models are going to contain and just look at that a little bit. So let's just write here model architecture planning. And that just is inside a models.md file. I've created this docs folder. And that's just to house some documentation for this. So now let's actually get started with this. So essentially what we want to do is create a membership platform where users subscribe and create a certain membership plan that allows them to view certain types of courses. And each course has so many lessons or lectures attached to it. That's basically the architecture here. And so how I've decided to do this, obviously there are many ways to do this, but the way I've decided to do it is by using five core models. And so let's just work through them now. So the first one is going to be a membership model. And this model is something that we would create in the beginning and then never touch again, unless you were adding a different type of model of, of membership to that. So basically the membership model needs to have a slug and I'm adding a slug to most memberships because, or most models, just because of URLs. Just makes it easier in the long run to use slugs instead of IDs. So a slug, if you don't know what a slug is, it's just the URL that, or whatever word or phrase is being displayed in the URL. So for example, it could be something like course number one. That's a slug. And it's just used for better naming convention for your URLs and it's just a lot nicer to view. So we need a slug. The second thing is the type and the type is basically going to be one of three. It's going to be a pro, a free, a pro or an enterprise uh, type. And so this is what I mean by the, the, the three things that you or three memberships you'll create in the beginning and then never create another one or never touch them again because once you've created these types of memberships, it basically references, this, this entire object is a reference. It's not something that we're going to work with and change as we go along. So we're going to describe the type of the, of the membership as one of these three, and we'll specify it with choices, as you'll see um, soon. Then we need a price, which is pretty straightforward, and then a Stripe plan ID. And that is just referencing to our Stripe account, because when you create a membership, or a subscription rather, you need certain objects to be created already. And one is a product, and then a plan, and then a subscription. And you'll see that soon as well. But basically, we need this plan ID to reference the type of membership that the user is subscribing to. 
and so that is the membership object that's all there is to it the next thing is the user membership and so I mean what is that we've just created a membership now we're creating a user membership yes so the reason is because the user membership is just referencing to the type of membership uh, object that we've created in the beginning so one the user membership requires a user and you can use a custom user or the default user it doesn't matter just the user we're not going to be creating a custom user here because that's not really the point so we need that and then we need a stripe customer id and the reason for that is because every time you create a subscription in stripes um, backend you need to specify the customer associated with the subscription otherwise who are you subscribing to what so you need that and that will be created automatically as the user membership is created so that's that won't be difficult and then we need to specify the membership type and that is just referencing what membership object the user actually created so I'm going to tab over here and we'll just say it's a foreign key to the default user uh, the, well that is the first one here so let's just go and tab a little bit in there and then here we'll just create a foreign key to the membership so let's just delete that there so like that and we'll just capital that capitalize that there okay so that is the user membership object simply just those three fields there the next would be a subscription and so you again you could maybe incorporate this into the user membership object as well uh, but the subscription object is only created when a membership when a member creates a paid um, membership and so this is associated to a user membership and it needs a stripe subscription id so that is only created when a user has paid and on our stripe backend they've actually created a subscription to one of the plans that we've created and then another field here would be something like active which we'll just we'll keep there and so let's actually just tab these two a little bit more and we're going to create another foreign key to the user membership so just like that and we've only got two more models left so we've done all of the user stuff the memberships the subscriptions that's all done and that's pretty straightforward uh, and pretty simple as well i mean there's only three models only th three four fields on each one so it's really bare bone you can obviously add a lot to that but that's really all it's come down to the next two are the course and the lesson and so again both will have slug as i talked about earlier and then both will have a title and that's just for naming convention obviously and both would have a description maybe well we could give we will give the course a description obviously you can go on and add these to the lesson as well but it doesn't really matter we're just trying to get the skeleton going so the description and then the only real key thing about a course is saying what memberships this course allows it to view so this would be the allowed memberships and so this essentially would be a foreign key to the membership and that's that's really all there is to the course object then with the lesson we would probably need a course associated with it so this would need a course and then obviously that would be a foreign key to the course and then every lesson would need some kind of position field and you might be able to get away with using the primary key or the ID if you never deleted a lesson ever but that just practically probably won't happen so we need some kind of position field which would just be an integer and then we would need a video and maybe a thumbnail for the for the video as well and that is it that that is the lesson object and that concludes the brainstorming of the model architecture these are the five models that we're going to be creating and we're going to get started with it in the next one
So in this video, we're going to get started with our first app, which is going to be our memberships app. And so if we navigate into our source folder, and if you list everything out, we're going to have the docs folder, manage.py, and then the video service, which has our settings and all that. So to get started, we're going to say Python manage.py start app, and we'll call it memberships. Now, if you list everything out, you have a memberships folder. And if we go into sublime text, there's the memberships folder. It has some migrations, models, and all that. And so what I'm going to do is in the terminal, we're going to say Python manage.py and migrate. I know that that won't migrate the memberships just yet, but that's just doing the initial migrations for the project, which we haven't done yet. And with that, I'm going to create a super user. So we'll say create, oh, spell that correctly, create super user. I'll say admin and leave the email address blank. And we will just put in the password. And so now we could go and run the server, but nothing is going to be displayed just yet. So let's just go and work in Sublime Text for now. So what we can do is we can add the memberships app into our settings. So if you go to settings and we'll just add memberships, just like that. And we'll close that off. And what we can actually do so far is we can create our static folder and our media folder for the project. So inside settings and URLs, that's what we're gonna need right now. We can go all the way down to the bottom. And I'm actually just going to copy and paste some code in here to save us some time. So we've got the static files directory, which is basically just joining our source folder, the base directory with the static root folder, which we'll create in a second. And we've got the virtual environment path, which is just grabbing from the base directory, the static root, which is just saying the static folder, or the static will be the name of the folder with our static files. And then media URL will be media, and the media root, similarly to static root, will be media root. Then inside urls.py, I'm going to delete those comments and we're just going to need a few things here. So again, I'm just going to paste in this if statement here, which is just checking if our project is in debug mode. So debug is true. Then we are adding in our static URL and our media URL. And then we just need some imports from that. So we'll say from django.conf import settings so that we can say this if settings debug here and then we're just going to need from django.conf.urls.static import static and that's just to allow this statement here settings uh, the stat adding the static static url and media url so with that, we now have the settings and the URL set up for our setting our static URL and media URL. Now we can actually get started in our memberships app. So if we navigate to the models.py and actually just open up our documentation again, just to have that for reference, this models.py is only going to hold these three models here, the membership, the user membership and the subscription. So let's go ahead and create our first one here. So we'll say class membership, and it comes from the models.model. .model. And the first field it has is a slug. So we'll say slug is a models.slug field. And that doesn't take any parameters. Then it has a type, a price, and a stripe plan ID. So what I'm going to do is say, if I were to just say type, you see it gets colored here. You can't name it this because this already has a meaning. So we'll just say membership type and it will be a character field with some choices. So I'm just gonna leave that commented for a second. And the next one is the price. So we'll say price is models.integer field. And we'll say that the default is maybe, maybe 15. And then the stripe plan ID so stripe plan ID is a character field as well and we'll specify the maximum length to be 40. So that's how many characters it can go up to. And then we'll just say define string 
of self and just make sure you close our brackets and we'll just say return self dot membership type because it is a character field so now because this is a type what, how I'm going to do this is I'm going to define three uh, types of choices that we can we can pick from and so I'm just going to copy and paste that in because it's not anything difficult so here I'm just specifying a global uh, variable this membership choices in capital letters and it's a tuple that contains enterprise which is int professional pro free is free and so what we can do in the character field is we can specify the choices equal to membership choices and the maximum length I'll just say is 30 and so what you can do with that as well when you have a choices field uh, or choices parameter included is you can specify the default so I'm going to spec specify the default here to be free and just comma there and so that means that every time a membership is created the default will be free obviously we can select the enterprise or professional one as well and that really is the membership model so now let's actually move on to the user membership and we'll go a bit faster for this one so we'll say it's a class of user membership and it comes from models.model and it has a user field so we will say the user is a one-to-one -one field because we only want one user membership for every user and it's going to come from the settings or user model and we'll specify the on delete the models dot cascade meaning if you delete the user membership you delete the user as well and you have to specify on delete because it's a one-to-one -one field and that's one of the things from Django 2. So we're going to import settings here. So we'll say from django.conf import settings. And then the next field on the user membership was the Stripe customer ID. So I'm actually just going to copy the plan ID, post that, paste that there, and say customer ID. And then it's the membership type that is the last one. So we say membership type equals to actually we'll just, we'll just call this membership. So models dot foreign key and it's foreign key with the membership object. And we also have to specify on delete, which we'll just say is models dot cascade. It's all right for now. So actually we could just say set null so that we can avoid those those deletions so to to use set null we'll just say null equals to true and there we go so now we've specified two of the models the last one is the subscription so we'll just say class subscription come from models.model and I'll just create some space here for us so the first field for the subscription is the user membership. So we'll say the user membership, and that is a foreign key. And actually, we can add that. We should move that just one above here. So it's a foreign key with the user membership on delete is models dot cascade just for now. And then we've got the Stripe subscription ID, which again, I'll just copy this as the Stripe customer ID. And then the last one is active, which is just a Boolean field. So models.boolean field default equals to and let's say true because if we are creating one then it would most likely be true so now we just need to put some defined strings here so define string of self and we'll say return self.user.username 
and define string here. And we'll say return self dot user membership dot user dot username. And that's all right for now. So we'll just put some space there. And cool. So now what we need to do is we need to create a signal for the user membership object because that's not going to be created just by itself. There needs to be something telling Django to actually create it. So at the top, we're going to need to import something here. So we're going to say from Django.db.models.signals import post save. So post save is the signal that we're going to use that will create the user membership. So here we'll just say define post save user membership create and it takes a sender, an instance, created and then just pass in args and keyword args and then here we'll just say if created then user membership objects get or create and we will get it by the user saying that it is the instance and then here we will just say user membership created equals to this exact same thing here and then we'll just say if user membership dot custom dot struct custom ID is none or the user membership custom ID is equal to an empty string so meaning there is no stripe customer ID currently then we say the new customer ID equals two and now we need to import stripe so we'll come up here and we'll just say import stripe we'll need to install that now as well so we'll say stripe dot customer dot create so this is all part of their documentation which you can find in the docs and it's going to be instance.email and that will just create the customer on the Stripe backend. So all you need to do is pass in the email. And then we'll just say the user membership dot customer ID or Stripe customer ID equals to the new customer ID of ID. So this is returning an object. This customer create it's give it's returning us an object and we are grabbing the ID field from that and then we can just save that membership and then with the signal we can use post save so we'll just say post save dot connect and here we just pass in the function that we just created which is this post save method and we say we specify the sender as the settings dot auth user model so that is the signal done for us. So now what we can do is we can install Stripe. So let's go here. I'm just going to clear everything. And we will just say pip install Stripe. So there's Stripe installed. And now we can make some migrations because we've been editing the models. So it's gone and created those Member, the membership subscription and user membership ob, um, objects and then we'll just say manage.py migrate there we go so now let's actually go and run the server and we will add these three objects into our admin so let's just copy these here so we'll go into admin we'll say from models import membership and all that and say so admin website that register all those three okay so 
Now, because we've added this post save receiver, we're actually going to need to delete the database and recreate our, our super user. So let's go and delete the migrations from the memberships app. Close the server and we'll say make migrations memberships. We'll say migrate and we'll say manage operator create super user pass in admin I'll just pass in a fake email address here and a password and that email address is necessary because we need it for Stripe. You can see I've gotten this error and that's because we haven't actually specified uh, our Stripe API key. So at this point what you want to do is go into settings so inside video service settings here at the bottom you're going to want to create something in the format of the following so you're going to say if let's actually just create some space here so if debug So if debug is true, then you're going to say your Stripe publishable key is equal to some key on your dashboard. And then your Stripe secret key is the same thing. So secret key. And then copy the same thing and just say else and then this would be your live keys. So currently this is for test data, so it's not actually going to do anything. And so what you want to do now is you want to go and put your Stripe publishable key and secret key inside here. And then I'm, I'm going to do the same and then continue from there. Okay, so I've just inputted my Stripe publishable key and secret key. And now inside the models, what you want to do is say Stripe.API key equals to settings dot stripe secret key so this is then basically configuring your stripe account and now everything should work for us to create a super user so let's actually just go back and we actually might need to delete these migrations one more time so we delete those delete the database, go back, make migrations memberships, migrate, create a super user, and a password. And there we go. So now we've created our super user. Now if we were to run the server, and just go into a browser and we can just log into the admin here to check if this was done correctly so now we've got our membership subscription and user membership if we go to the user membership and then to admin now you can see your stripe customer id is right here and that concludes the first real lesson of this tutorial or of this project we've just covered all of the models that we'll be using in the memberships app and we'll be working on the views in the next one so now that we've created these models under our memberships app if we go to the memberships you can see we don't have any created at the moment and that's why under the user membership for admin, we don't have anything associated for the membership type because there are no membership objects. So if we were to go and create one now, then we could add a slug and change all the stuff, but we don't have a Stripe plan ID. And so that's what we need to do now. We need to go to our Stripe dashboard and create those plans. So under billing in your dashboard, you want to go to products and then here you can see I already have 
mine already created. So I'm just going to walk you through those. So essentially what you want to do is you want to create a product. So that was actually the first thing you want to do. Under products, we could just add a new one here and then put in a product name, which could be whatever you really want. Uh, don't put enterprise or any of this. You could put something like course membership, something like that, and then you'll create that product. And then under each product, you can create a plan. So here I have three plans, free, enterprise, and professional. If I go to free, then you can actually specify all the details for it. I don't believe there were actually anything, uh, there was actually anything specific you needed to do. So let's say add pricing plan and the plan nickname could be uh, something like intermediate, whatever that means. The ID leave blank because Stripe will put that for us. And then dollars is what I leave it in. Uh, does the pricing plan have multiple price tiers based on quantities? So that would be maybe something for um, for actual physical goods. And then the price per unit here, because mine is this is a free membership, obviously it would be zero. Then for uh, the next one, it would be uh, 15, 25, whatever you really want. The billing is monthly, again, whatever you want, trial period, etc. And then just click add pricing plan. And that really is that that's really it. So here you've got the product ID, and then each plan has a plan ID as well. So if I go to that plan, then you have a plan ID. And that's really it. So here I've got the nickname as free. So what you want to, want to actually do is you want to create a free one, you want to create a, a professional and an enterprise one, and then take that plan ID. So this one is for the free, and paste that in over here. Make sure that we don't have any spaces on the end. We'll say free, make the price zero, select free as the membership type and save that. And then we will select the next one as pro. We'll make the slug pro. The price is 15 and we'll grab the plan ID for pro. So let's just go back. To professional, select that plan ID, save that, and then the next one for enterprise as well. Cool, so now I've created the enterprise one as well, and that's really it. So if we go back to the user membership now for admin, we can select free, and now from now on, it will select free by default because that object actually exists. Cool, so with that, we can now move on to the course models in the next one. So now that we've created our Stripe plans, we've created the membership models, we only have these two models left to create. So let's go and do that. We're going to start by going to the terminal and we're going to create a new app. So we'll say Python manage .py start app and we'll call it courses. And if we list everything out, now we can see the courses app is right there. And inside our settings, we're going to add that courses app into our installed apps, just like this. So we can reference this models.md to help us with creating the models. So inside models.py, let's start by creating the course model. So there we have the course model and we're just going to add the fields there. So the first one is the slug. So we say slug equals models dot slug field. Next one is the title. So we'll just make it a character field. And we'll specify the maximum length as 120. The description will make a text field. And the last one is the allowed memberships. So we'll just say allowed memberships equals models dot and it is a foreign key to the memberships or should it be? See, it should actually be a many to many field because we want to allow more than one membership most likely. So we'll change that to a many to many field 
and here it will be a models.many to many field and we just need to import that model. So we say from memberships dot models import and it was the membership object that we want that uh, many to many field relationship with. And we just specify it there. And then we can just add a string and return self.title. And then the next one is the lesson. So we'll say class lesson comes from models.model. And again, it has a slug. So I'm just going to copy that as a title. Again, I will just copy that. And then the last, the last few here is the course. So the course is a foreign key. So we'll say course equals models dot foreign key with course. And we'll say on delete equals models dot cascade or rather set null so that we don't delete it. So we'll say set null, null equals true. And then we have the position field. So we'll say position equals models dot integer field and then we have the video and the thumbnail so we're going to say video equals models dot and then here we can't actually implement a video unless you have some kind of custom app that allows you to add a video so this is just going to be a video URL so it's just going to reference the video which might be a URL to some uh, something like Amazon Web Services that's hosting the video but we'll just do it by referencing to a URL inside our static folder just just for this project even though it's not something you would ever do for a live production uh, project so we'll just say models dot character field and we'll say the maximum length equals 200 and then we'll just say the thumbnail is an, int yeah, an image field. And if we want to do that, we're going to need pillow. So we'll just say the string here and return self.title. And now if we go back to here, we're going to say pip install pillow so that it actually allows us to use, to use image fields. And with that installed, we can say run the server. Let's check that all of that's working. Yes, it is. And now we'll just say make migrations. So now it's created the course and the lesson. We say migrate and run the server. And there we go. Now if we go back in here, we can actually go and create our first course. And we'll first actually need to add that to the admin. So in here, we'll just say from dot models import course and lesson, and then just say admin dot site dot register the course and the lesson, and just go back to Chrome here. Refresh this. Now we have course and lesson, so we could add a lesson here and add our course and so i'll do this now and see you in the next one so what we want to do now is we want to create the views that are actually going to show the courses that we've created so we're going to use django's class-based views because this really is the simplest way of doing it so what we're going to do is just say from django.views.generic import and then here we can import quite a bunch of different generic views and so we can import the list view because we want to list out all the courses and we can import the detail view so that we can get a more detailed description of each instance of a course and so with that we can go ahead and just say class and we'll call it a course list view and it inherits from the list view and then all we need to do is specify the model for the view. So let's import the model, which comes from our models. So we import the course that we just created 
and we specify the course as the model. And then we'll just copy and paste that here. And I'm just going to call this the detail view, which comes from the detail view. And again, we just specify the model as the course. So now to actually show these views, we need to create a URLs file. So we'll just create that inside the courses app and call it urls.py. And I'm just going to copy everything from the video service URLs and paste that there and just delete what we don't need. So pretty much almost everything. And back inside the video service URLs, we're just going to import include from Django URLs. And we're going to create another path here, which goes just to an empty string there. And it's going to go to include the courses URLs. So that's going to redirect to the URLs.py inside here. And now we're going to import the views that we just created. So we'll say from dot views import the course list view and the course detail view. And we're not going to have a path of admin. So I'm just going to create an empty one again and put course list view dot as view. And we can give it a name of list. And back inside here, we can actually give a namespace of courses. And I'm just going to copy that, paste that there. And we're going to put the detail view name as detail. And then the path we will specify as some kind of regular expression. So for paths, the type of regular expression is slightly different to that of how we would with a URL. If we were to do it with a URL, we would have done something like uh, brackets, question mark, P, and then with the slug, and we would have put the backward slash for W minus, looking for words, and that would basically look for the slug uh, being passed in to the URL. But now for paths, it's slightly different. So here you use this notation of these arrow keys and inside that we can put slug, just like that. And that would actually be pretty much the same thing as doing this. So if we just go and cut that out there and back inside, uh, actually inside here, we need to specify the app name. So here we would say courses as the name of our app. Now, if we check our server, everything is working. So if we go back to here and just run this, now it gives us a template does not exist, which is fine. So now we can actually go and create that. So inside the courses, we'll create a new folder and call it templates. And then inside templates, we'll create another new folder and call it courses. And then inside courses, we'll call it the course, it should actually be course list.html because that is what the class-based view is looking for. So let's just go and do that. So so there's our course list.html. And inside here, I'm just going to create some basic HTML here. And we'll just create an h1 and say our course list view page. And we'll just loop through all of the objects in our object list. Object list is the default uh, context object that's being passed in from the class based view. So that object list is a list of all the course models. And I'm just going to put an end for here and we'll just put a paragraph tag and just put object. just like that. And there we go. So now we have the course list view page showing here. But obviously, we don't have anything looping anything showing from this loop because we don't have any object list because we haven't created any courses. So let's actually just go to courses inside the admin create a course and we'll just say Django 101 Django introduction, some description there make it free and we'll just come back and now we see Django introduction. So that is the beginning of the views. In the next one, we'll get started with the lesson view.
So before we get onto the lesson view, I just want to quickly finish off the detail view of the course. And so to finish this off, we're just going to create a convenience method on the course model. And that's just going to be the get absolute URL. And that just takes in self and it's going to return a reverse, which I've imported here. So from Django URLs and reverse takes in the name of a namespace for URL, which in this case would be the courses. And then detail is the name of the, of the URL name that we want to go to from that namespace. And we can pass in keyword arguments as a parameter to the reverse call. And the only argument that we need is the slug because in the URLs, slug is the field that we're required for the detail view. So we pass in slug as self.slug because slug is a field on the course. So with that, we can then reference that in our list view and we can change this from a paragraph to a link and we'll add an href as the object get absolute URL. And so now if we were to refresh this page, this is now a link and if you click it, it takes you to that, you, that slug of the course. Obviously it's not showing because we haven't created the detail HTML. So let's do that inside the courses templates and we'll save this as course detail.html and we will just actually don't even need to copy that. So there and we'll just say object.title. And again, we can reference object because for a detail view, this, this model being passed in automatically gives us object as the context variable. So we can just refresh this page and there it shows the object title for this course. So with the course detail view finished, we can now get started with the lesson detail view. And there's not going to be a lesson list view because the list of the lessons is going to be shown here in the course detail view. So we're just skipping that. If you'd like to create a, another view for the lesson list view, then you can do that as well. So I'm just going to say course uh, cl class lesson detail view. And it's not going to inherit from the detail view like this one. We're actually going to import view, which is another generic view. And the reason for that is just because it's a little bit more customizable, uh, which is what we want. So on the class, I'm going to specify the get method. So we just say define get and it takes in self request. And basically what we want is to filter all the courses by some slug and then filter once we've got the course that we need, filter that course's lessons for a specific lesson according to a slug. So we're going to need two slugs basically. So we need the course slug and we need the lesson slug. And I'll just pass in args and keyword args. And so basically what we want to do is we want to create a course query set and we will query set the course objects and we'll filter it according to the slug field where it equals to the course slug. And then we just check if it exists. So if the course query set exists, then we would specify the course as the course query set first element, which is also the only element in it, assuming that we don't have duplicate slugs. And so this will grab the course for this lesson. So now what we want to do, I'm actually just going to copy this here and paste it and call this the lesson query set. So we want to do pretty much the same thing here, except we want to filter the course we just received. So this course object, and we want to get its lessons. So somehow we want to get its lessons like this. And we want to say, if the lesson query set exists, then the lesson object is equal to the first lesson in the query set. But how do we actually get the lessons for the course? So if we go back to the models, let's actually check our relationships here. So on the lesson object, we've specified the course 
with a foreign key to the course model. And so when we specified with a foreign key, it allows us to basically gain access to it on the course model. Even though we haven't specified anything on the course model telling us that it has the lesson associated with us with it, we can still get hold of it. And so we're actually going to create another convenience method for that. So and it's going actually going to be a property. So just below the get absolute URL, I'm going to say define lessons of self. And to make it a property, all we need to do is just say at property above this function or the method. And basically that allows us to say course.lessons instead of course.lessons like that. And so basically when we have this foreign key, it allows us to do the following. So we can say return self, so grab the course object, the instance, and say lesson set. And lesson set is, this is basically syntax for the foreign key object. So lesson is the model being joined by the foreign key, and then underscore set will actually grab it because the foreign key was specified on the lesson and not on the course. So we can just use that. So if lesson was called lecture, then we could just call lecture set. So we just say lesson set dot all, and that will grab all of the lessons associated with this course. And what I want to do is I want to order these lessons that we're receiving. Uh, so we use order by, which is a, a method on a query set and we can say order it by a certain field so we're going to order these lesson objects by the position field that's why we have the position field because we want to get it in an order that is unique so there might it, this would then prevent it from appearing in a random order if you deleted say five or six lessons then they don't appear in a random order so you can always go back and change the order if you like it as well. So all we need to do is specify the, pos the field, which in this case is position. So that is the lessons method. So now what we can do in the view is actually just call course.lessons, just like that. And that's actually going to get all the lessons in a specific order associated with the course. So there we have the lesson query set, and all we need to do is filter it by the slug. So we're grabbing the lessons according uh, that are associated with the course. We're, fil we're filtering them, looking for the one that has this unique slug. So looking for this unique lesson. And if it exists, then we return the only one left in the query set. And so with that, we can then create some kind of context object. So we'll just create it like that, and we'll just say object, and that is the lesson. And then here we'll just say return a render of the request to some template and pass in the context. And so here I'll just say courses slash, and it'll be the lesson detail dot HTML just to keep that consistent. So inside courses, I'll create another HTML page, save it as lesson underscore detail.html, create some HTML here, and we'll just say object, just like that. Now, if we go back in here, we actually want to go to the lessons URL. We haven't even created that yet. So back inside the view, we want to copy this lesson detail view and go into the URLs, paste that there, and now create some kind of path that will take in two types of slugs. So the first one will be the course slug, and this has to be in, written exactly like this because this is how we wrote it as the input for our function. So course slug, and we'll say slash lesson, slug just like this here and that should be good so then we just say 
use the lesson detail view as view and we can specify a name as the lesson detail like that. So now that we've got that, let's actually check if the server is running. Yes, it is. So let's go to here. And actually, we all first need to create a lesson. So inside the admin, I'm going to create a lesson quickly. So we'll create the slug as first. First, the course is Django introduction. Position will say is one. And I'll just make up a random URL there and choose a thumbnail and save. And we'll go back to here. And actually, let's go into the templates and style that a little bit better in the course detail. So here we'll say for lesson in object.lessons and core. And we'll want to create some kind of anchor tag that goes towards the lesson get absolute URL, which we'll create now in a second. And here we'll put the lesson title. So let's see if that works. So there we've got first, if we click it, it obviously doesn't go anywhere right now. So then on the model, we'll want to create the get absolute URL. So if we just create some space there, We've already imported our reverse up top here, so we'll just say define, and I'll just copy that right there. Define get absolute URL of self. And we just want to return a reverse, the same as we just did, and it's gonna to go to the courses namespace, and then to the lesson detail name that we just created. And we'll pass in keyword arguments, And so the keyword arguments, the first one is the course slug, and that would be self.course.slug. And then the lesson slug, which would be self.slug. So that seems to be good. Now, if we go back into here, refresh this, click it, and there we go. It takes us to the first lesson for this course, and there we can see the title for it. So at this point, we haven't actually started with any of the logic yet, as in we're not displaying certain things to the users depending on the type of membership that they have. All we're doing right now is actually just displaying the list of courses, their details, and the lesson details as well. We're not actually filtering the results depending on what the user can and can't see. So let's actually get started with that now in this lesson detail view. So what we want to do is check the user membership type. That's the first thing we want to do. And then depending on that membership type, we would decide whether or not to pass the object into the context, which would then be shown. So let's go and say the user membership is equal to the user membership objects. And we're going to filter them with, we're filtering by the user. And that is equal to the request user. So request.user and we say dot first to get that actual user, but we need to import the user membership. So we'll just go up top here and we'll say from memberships.models import the user membership. So now we actually have the user's membership, but we want to get the user membership type. So what we're going to do is just grab the user membership dot membership dot membership type and let's actually go take a look at those models to make sure so we've grabbed the user membership object which is here stored in this user membership and we are grabbing the membership associated with it so now we're going over to this membership object so now we're here and we're grabbing the membership type field which is then this here and that's going to return a string which is either going to be free, professional, or enterprise. So once you've got that, then what we want to do is actually grab the allowed courses uh, 
for this membership type and see if this can actually be displayed. So we're going to say that the course allowed membership types equals to the course that we just grabbed now. And we're going to say dot allowed memberships dot all. And we have to say dot all because this is a many to many field. So if we check the models here, we have this allowed memberships on the course. So we're grabbing the course and then getting all the all the objects that are inside this many to many field. So once we've got that, we're going to assign an initial object into our context. And that is actually going to be none. And then depending on whether the user can see something or not, we will change the context. So here what we want to do is we want to check if the user can view the course, so basically meaning if the course's allowed membership types includes the current user's membership type, then show the object. So what this would look like is we'd say if the course allowed membership types, remember this is a membership object because it's a many to many field of memberships. So if we filter this query set where the membership type, so now if we go into the models there, so if this membership type is equal to the user membership type, so if if it exists, if the query set exists, meaning if the basically if it exists, it means that the user member the user's membership type is one of the allowed membership types that this course can uh, can be viewed on. So then we would say that the context would include the object as the lesson and now we'll actually pass either none or the lesson into the context so that is the first little bit of logic that we've just implemented so now inside our lesson detail we can actually spice this up a little bit the first thing I'm going to do is just put an h1 tag and we'll just clearly say here this is the lesson detail view and what we want to do is just say if the object is not none, and then we'll just end the if right here, then we're going to display some kind of stuff inside here. So if it's none, then obviously nothing gets displayed. So what we want to do is we want to display the lesson or the lesson title, which is just the object title, and we want to display the object description. And we'll probably want to implement some kind of video here. So we'll do that soon, not in this video, but we will implement that. And we'll probably want to also implement some kind of else statement here. So we'll say, if the object is none, which basically means that the user cannot view it or isn't allowed to view it, then we would want to put an h3 tag here that says upgrade membership. And then you can put a whole bunch of other stuff, stuff here and basically redirect the user to another page where they can create a membership. So if we check here, the server is running. So let's go and check that. That looks a little bit better. So if we go into the course and let's say change this to professional. And if we go back here, now it says upgrade membership. So before we get into any more detail in our HTML pages, let's go and actually get started with Bootstrap. So I'm just going to look for the Bootstrap CDN and we'll just use Bootstrap 3. It doesn't really matter. And I'm just going to copy all of that and we're going to create a base.html inside our courses. So we'll just save that as base.html. And we'll just write HTML. Paste those there. And so we need the link in the head. And we don't need the theme. But we do need the script. So that should stay there. That should stay there. The last thing that we'll need 
is jQuery. So let's look for the jQuery CDN because Bootstrap does need jQuery. And we'll just copy that right there and paste that in our base.html as well. Okay, so now we have Bootstrap and jQuery, so we can actually get started with styling this to be a lot better. So with jQuery and Bootstrap, we can now get started with styling our base.html so that we can have some smart Django templates. So I'm just going to put a block called content, and that is going to specifically be used for the well, the content, the main part of our HTML that's going to go inside in all the other templates. And then what we want to do is create some kind of a navigation bar. And I'm just going to use breadcrumbs for that. So I'm going to copy and paste that in directly so we don't have to sit and watch me type that. And so that is what it looks like. I'm just going to tab this over a little bit. And we'll just put some more space here. So Basically, we're just creating a container with that's bootstrap styling and then a breadcrumb, which is also bootstrap. And then just putting a list item and each list item that does not have the class of pull right will go on the left and the rest of them will go on the left and just a few links here. So we've got register, login, memberships, and obviously these won't work in this project, but that's just to give you an idea. And then inside here, we've got this block, which is the post detail link. And that's basically just um, a block that will allow us to, to include some more list items depending on the page that we're in. So you'll see that soon. If we just actually save this, and for example, in the lesson detail, we can go and delete all of that and say it extends the course base.html and then put a block of content around it and just end that block and then we can actually just delete that as well now if we close that and go back here okay it's telling us course base does not exist so let's just try base retry that Up courses base.html refresh that now we have this little navigation bar kind of thing in the top here and so we can go and do this for all of our templates now so here inside list I'll do the same thing I'll actually copy it from the detail and just like that and then in course detail I'll do the same and I'll just take the end block and get rid of that and that. So with those templates fixed up a little bit, I just now want to add in something which makes it a little bit nicer, uh, which is just messages. And that's just a display that shows um, on your act, on whatever page you are, uh, just giving the, the user a little bit more feel that they know what's going on and some kind of feedback for the interactions that they're going with. So inside courses, I'm going to create a file called messages.html. And again, I'm just going to copy and paste this in here because this is not stuff that you really want to watch me type. So this is using Django's messages framework. So we loop through all the messages and basically this is using bootstrap styling um, to show a little message at the top of the screen that just is whatever you want really. And we can include that in our base.html which I'm going to put above the container and I'm going to say include courses message messages.html just like that. And so that's just quite nice because then we can actually put some messages into our views, uh, which we'll see later on. So we haven't actually gotten started with the membership views yet. We've created the models, 
but in this one we're going to continue with listing out the actual models on some kind of list view and we're also going to make it a class-based view so inside memberships views up high we're going to go ahead and import the class-based views from Django so we'll say from Django.views.generic import and we're just going to import the list view for now so let's create a class-based view which we'll call the membership select view and that's going to inherit from the list view we're calling it the select view because it's going to not only list them out but actually hold a form which when you select whichever membership you'd like to create takes you to the next place where you can then pay for your membership so it's going to be called the select view because that's really what it's for and so all we need to do is specify the model so we'll need to import it so from models import membership and that is the model for the class-based view so with this class-based view we can already go ahead and create the template for it so we can say we'll create a new folder inside memberships and call it templates and inside templates we'll create memberships and inside memberships we'll create the membership list view dot html or membership list dot html and we're going to extend from the base.html which is inside the courses template so we'll just say courses slash base.html and then we'll need to put a block of content and that has an end block as well and inside here we're just going to put a few things so because we're using bootstrap let's go and create a div and this div will have a class of container and inside this container we'll just put an h1 for now and inside the h1 it just says select a membership and then we could create a row continuing with bootstrap styling and then we'll loop through all of the objects in the object list so we'll say for object in object list then we'll end the for loop as well and we'll just display that object right there so because we're displaying the object we can access its properties because this is being passed into uh, the class based view as the context variable so we'll say membership type just to be more clear and then we'll just need to create a urls.py as well so inside memberships We'll create a new file and save it as urls.py and I'm just going to copy the one from courses and just paste that there and so all we need is the membership select view so we'll import that from the relative import the app name is memberships and we'll get rid of those two parts for now so all we need is just an empty path and it's going to be the membership select view and we'll leave it as as list actually called select so now we've created the url so if we check the server is working so now if we go to memberships uh, it's saying okay so we haven't actually put the include in our project url so let's do that as well so just paste that there this is the memberships namespace and it goes to the memberships path and goes to memberships URLs now if we try that again let's actually see did we miss something so it's saying a path syntax error oh we didn't include a comma there now if we refresh this there we go so now it says select a membership and it's got free professional and enterprise So now that we have our membership list view actually working, let's go ahead and style this page to look a little bit better. Back inside the models, we have two fields on, on this model that we can actually show. The slug, we wouldn't show because that's part of the URL. And the stripe plan ID, we most definitely wouldn't want to show. So the price and the membership type are probably the two fields that we would want to actually show over here. So inside the membership list view, inside the for loop we're going to create another div and it's going to have a class of column 
small four and column medium four and we'll just cut this and paste it inside the div so we are basically looping a div for every membership type that we have and let's actually wrap this in an h2 tag okay that's sorry about this All right so let's put the price as well so we'll say price and we'll just say ours is in dollars and we'll say it's the object monthly price just like that and we could add in a small tag as well so to say uh, per month something like that and then we'll just list out all the courses that are included for this particular membership so we'll just say included courses and then we will most likely want an unordered list and we'll loop inside it so we'll just say for course in object dot course set dot all so that's going to loop through the courses associated with the membership object if you don't understand why that works back inside the courses models we've so we've put this many to many field with the membership which means on the membership object we can grab it by calling the object course which is the name of the model that has the relationship underscore set and dot all because it's a many to many relationship so then we'll just say end for as well and we'll want to create a list item every time so we'll say course dot title as well so let's see what that looks like so far and there we go so we've got free professional enterprise and we can see the included course is the Django introduction currently for the professional membership and now what we want to do is we want to create some kind of form that allows the member the user to select that particular membership as the one they want to create so basically we're just going to create a form so we'll just say form and it's going to have a method of post because we will be posting something and it's probably going to have some URL that it's going to be posted to so we'll figure that out later and because it's a post form we need to pass in the CSRF token and we'll basically well if it's free we don't want them to select that as well so we we'll want to do a check outside the form and say if the object membership type is not free and free isn't a string because it is a string this actual membership type and we'll just say and if at the end of the form so we're saying if the so remember we're looping through all the all the types of memberships if that membership is free we don't want a form if it's not free then we do want a form that's basically what what this is checking and so we'll probably want a button and the button can say select and we'll give it a style so we'll say class button button warning for bootstrap so now if we check this out we only have the select button for the professional and the enterprise not for the free because that's what this check here does and so what we'll then want to do is we'll also probably want to check if the membership that they're selecting is the membership that they currently have so we want to do another check inside the form so we'll say if the object membership type is not equal to the current membership and the current membership this context variable will have to pass in somehow and we'll say and if so meaning this button will only show if the mem membership that they're selecting is not the one that they currently have so meaning if you had a professional membership you shouldn't be able to select it again you can only go back to free or you could go to uh, enterprise and vice versa vice versa so if that is the case then we'll want to say else and we'll put something else in here and we'll say we'll just put a, a small tag and say this is your current membership just like that and basically we want to somehow pass in 
the actual membership type that is being selected and that will most likely not want to be seen by the user you don't want to have some kind of input that's showing you selected it so we're going to put a hidden input and that's just going to come after the end of here so we'll create an input here the type will be hidden the name is going to be membership underscore type and the value which is very important is the object membership type So for every single, well not the free membership, but for the professional and the enterprise membership, there's going to be a hidden input for each one of them. And the value of that input will be professional for the professional membership and enterprise for the enterprise membership. And that's quite convenient because then when you click on the select button for whichever form you want, then it's going to grab the membership type as one of the inputs depending on which one you selected. And then that's how we'll grab it in the back end. So this looks pretty good for now. Let's jump into the views in the next one. So what we did in the last one was we made this check to see if the object membership type is equal to the current membership. And this current membership, if we go back to the view, there's no way that Django currently knows what current membership actually means and so if this was a function based view then you would have probably created some kind of context and you would have said current membership inside here and you would have associated that to some kind of membership object that you filtered and then the context would be rendered using the render method well there's a similar way of doing that with class based views and that's by using a a method that's already built into the class base view which is the get context data and that takes self and we could put in args and keyword args and essentially this method does exactly what that method of passing in context like a dictionary uh, does on a function based view it basically does the exact same thing and it's just different syntax so, so what we need to do when we use the get context data method is we have to say context equals to and then we call super dot get context data of keyword logs and this context is basically grabbing all of the context variables that are being displayed um, by this model and so once you've got access to this context variable then we can actually add context to it because it also is a dictionary. So let's actually print the context just so we can see what it actually looks like. So back inside here, I'm just going to refresh this page. And if we go back in here, now we can see this list is, or this dictionary rather is, is being printed out. And we see paginator, page object, and object list, which is the query set of memberships. And so basically, this is just proving to you that context by calling the super command gets all the context data or the context variables that we're using. So what we want to do is we want to add something to the context. And the way we do that with a dictionary is just passing these brackets and then the name of whatever we want to add goes inside there. So this would be the current membership that we'd be passing in. But what are we actually passing in? Well, we need to get the user's membership because that's what the current membership is it's the user's current membership so to do that we'll create a variable current membership and we'll say it's some kind of method that's going to get the user membership and why I'm doing it like this is because I'm going to define a method up here that's going to actually be this get user membership method and the reason for that is because while building this I saw myself doing this probably countless times where I would need to get the current membership. So I figured it would be good to have a convenience method, which is also then just um, being dry and not repeating ourselves. So the way that we're going to do this is we're going to pass in the request. And the reason for that is because the, the user membership is attached to the user, which is attached to the request. So we can just get the user's membership simply by the request. So we're going to create a membership query set and we'll say the query set equals to the user membership 
objects and we're going to filter it by the request user. So we need to import the user membership from our models and we say if the user membership query set exists then we're going to grab the first one. So we'll say return query set dot first otherwise return none. And so now when we pass in the request into this method we are getting the current user's membership um, simply like that. So what we then do is we then pass this into the context so we say the current membership equals to the current membership but it's not just that simple what we need to do is actually pass in pass this variable in as a string and the reason for that is because we haven't set it up on the user membership to ref to return the user membership we're returning the username so if you were to just return it as this without the string then it wouldn't work so once we've done that, we can then just simply return the context and I'll delete that comment. And so now if we go back here and refresh, now it says request is not defined and that's because this is a class based view. So we have to say self.request and that looks good. So now if we refresh this, now we can see that all of this is working. So if I were to go into the user membership, of admin and say mine is professional now and refresh this page so our button is still showing now so let's go and see why that is oh, so the reason is because we're not actually grabbing the membership object so we need to say the current membership dot membership that is why we're calling string on it and so now if we refresh this now it says here this is your current membership So now that we're showing the user which membership they actually have, we can then get started with handling the posts of the form on this view. So for example, selecting, actually selecting this. Obviously it doesn't do anything right now, but that's what we're going to handle now. So before I actually show that, inside the URLs for our project, so inside video service, I've changed the path for courses to be actually slash courses and not just an empty string like this. So that's just making it a little bit more descriptive by saying courses. So we can actually go and close that now. And inside our membership views, we were busy with membership select view and we can actually handle the method of the or the post method by just saying define post and just letting it take self, the request and keyword arguments. And so this will then handle when a post is sent to this specific view. So here on this form, the method is the post and the action is currently dot, which means posted to the current URL that we're on. But we could be a bit more specific and specify a URL and that just takes the namespace. So memberships and then select, which is the name of the URL. So maybe if you wanted to handle the post on a different URL, then you could change this for whatever you'd like to be. And then here on the view, we want to get the only thing that's really being passed into the form, which is through this input, the membership type. And so to get it, we just want the name of the input that we want. So we can then say the selected membership equals to the request dot post and then say dot get and then pass in the name of the uh, input that you'd like to get the value of so this membership type is the name of the input and then what we'd be getting in this selected membership would be the value of the input so that would be enterprise or professional so if we just say print selected membership then we can see it and we'll just return it as well so we don't get errors. Um, so let's see, the server is working and if we refresh this, everything's working there. Now if we click select, it says string object has no attribute get. And if we just check here again, then we see in the console, it says enterprise. So you can see that it is printing the value 
of the of the membership if we just go into the admin to the user membership to admin and change this back to free and then just refresh this page let's click professional and now you see professional over here so that is working but now we actually want to handle it we don't want to just print it so I'm going to create another convenience method and I'm going to define it below the get user membership and that's going to be the get user subscription and so very similarly we will say define get user subscription which takes in a request and very similarly we want to create a query set so we'll call it the user subscription query set and we'll query the subscription model so we import that and we'll say objects.filter and we're going to filter it by the user membership field so on the model here with the for the subscription model one of the fields is the user membership and that's the only way we can filter it also by the user because the user membership is associated to the user so here we will say the user membership equals to get user membership because we've just defined that method above so this is going to get the user's membership so we're filtering it and then what we want to do is we want to check uh, if the query set exists so we'll say if the user subscription query set exists then we will grab the user subscription as the first object in the query set and then return the user subscription otherwise we will return none so you can see it's a pretty uh, similar format that we're going off of and so we are going to just need that in the long run so we'll say the user subscription equals get user subscription which takes the request and so just like that we have that convenience method done and then we'll probably also need the user membership so we'll say the user membership equals get user membership of request so that's nice and clean and so basically what we want to do with the selected membership is we want to make a check here so we want to see is the user's membership equal to the selected membership for example um, so what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to filter the membership objects according to the value that we got here because we can't compare this string with an actual object so we're going to say the selected membership query set equals to membership objects and then we'll filter it by the membership type and say it equals to the selected membership which is coming from this um, this post and so then again like the convenience methods we'll check if the selected membership exists and if it does then we will get it so say the selected membership actually we could call the selected membership type just so it's not confusing so the selected membership is then the first object in the query set and so now we actually have the selected membership object not just the string so once we have that we want to do a little bit of validation here so I'm just going to put a string here and say let's do something like this and say validation and so we want to do a simple check and just say if the user membership dot membership is equal to the selected membership even though that shouldn't happen because we're not displaying the button but if it is um, and we want to say if the user subscription is not none then we basically want to make but want to display something saying that the user uh, currently has this member membership and you don't need to pay and you only need to pay in some certain date so we'll say uh, messages.info and we haven't imported messages yet so we'll say from 
Django.contrib import messages. And we'll just cut that, paste that above. So with that, then we can display a message over here. So we'll say messages.info, pass in a request, and then the string will just be, you already have this membership, your, your next payment is due something here. And I'll just say format, um, get this value from Stripe. So hopefully that makes sense. And then once we have that, we can then just say return an HTTP response redirect, which will import and we'll import that from django.http. So from django.http import the HTTP response. And we basically here want to redirect the user back to the memberships page, but instead of doing, instead of just hard coding memberships, like a URL, we can actually get that URL that the user is coming from by saying request dot meta and then dot get the HTTP referrer. So that will redirect the user back to the URL they just came from. And then we can basically pass the selected membership into the, the uh, session. And the reason why we're doing that is because we want to basically pass this on to the next view. And one nice way of doing that is by using sessions. So we can just say uh, assign to the, the session. So we'll say request.session, which is a dictionary and we pass in the name. So we'll just say the selected membership type is equal to the selected membership dot membership type. So that is passing that, that value of enterprise or professional or whatever it is um, into the session. And then we can access it from the session in the next view that uh, is displayed. So then we can just say return an HTTP response redirect to, and then we'll just reverse to a URL and we'll say like to memberships payment, which we will define in the next video. So we'll just need to import reverse. So that comes from Django URLs. So import reverse, check if everything's working. So yes, it is. Now we'll just refresh this, select it, and it says reverse for payment not found, but it did uh, do everything else because it's obviously gotten to that last step. So in the next one, we will start with the payment view. Right, so we ended off the last one with this reverse call to this new URL that we haven't actually created yet. And so what I'm going to do is actually start with this new view and we're going to call it the payment view. So we'll just say find payment view and it's going to take the request. It's not a class-based view, notice that. So in this view, what we're going to do is basically provide the user with the Stripe payment form and handle the, ac the actual payment. So what we want to do is we want to get the user's membership and actually get the selected membership that we passed into the request session. And so we can actually get the user's membership the same way that we did in this view. So we can just copy this entire call of getting the user's membership. And then we want to get the selected membership from the request. Now I'm going to create another convenience method because we use this a lot. So I'm just going to define this here and I'm going to call it the get selected membership, which takes a request. And let's just scroll a bit down here. So this method is basically only going to work uh, if the selected membership is in the session. So for example, if you are going to the site for the first time and you have not reached the select view and you haven't selected a view, uh, selected a 
membership yet, then there's nothing to get from the session. So that's something that we have to be careful of. So what I'm going to do is say the membership type, which is what we passed in to the session here, the selected membership type, is equal to the request.session of, and that's not what we want to copy, we want to, we want to copy this, the selected membership. So we want to get that from the session. And once we have that, we want to we actually convert this membership type because this is a string. We want to convert that into an actual object. So we're going to filter the membership objects. So we're going to say the selected membership query set, similarly to what we did right here. And I'm actually going to copy that and paste that here equals to the membership objects, filtering it by the membership type, and it's equal to the select membership type, but in this case, it's the membership type. And then we want to say if the selected membership query set exists, return the first one in there, otherwise return none. And that's our last convenience method or convenient method that we'll be creating the rest is all inside the views so this is what we want to use we want to get the selected membership and say it's the selected membership equals to get selected membership of the query of the request and then once we have that now we can actually start working with some stripe stuff so in the top we're going to want to import stripe and if you again, if you haven't watched the video on Stripe payments uh, using that was done using the shopping cart, then you probably want to watch that to get maybe a bit more idea of tokens and how we actually uh, process payments. But so for this video, it's going to be pretty similar. So we want to first define the publish key, and that's going to come from our Stripe's uh, uh, our settings, which we defined earlier which is the publishable key and the reason why we want that is because we're going to pass that into the context so that we can actually use it in our form and what we want to do is actually create some payment HTML page now so inside memberships we'll create a new file and save it as membership payment .html. And here we will start creating the view or uh, this HTML in the next one. Okay, so now that we can get started with the HTML, I'm just going to copy and paste this code in, which is just some basic HTML skeleton, extend from base, block content, div class of container, row, and then inside the column, we're going to display the selected membership and we'll say selected membership, which is something. So we'll get the rest of that now. But back inside the view, we actually want to create some context and pass in, well, we could pass in the publish key. And just like that, which is the publish key and the selected membership as the selected membership and then return a render of the request to the memberships membership underscore payment dot html and pass in context so now we're actually getting this selected membership as a context variable and then we'll display it here using the curly braces and then inside the urls we'll need to import payment view here and we'll just copy this path and display the payment function here. And then we'll use the path as payment and the name as payment as well. So now if we check the server is working and if we just refresh this, now if I select enterprise, okay, so settings is not defined, so that's coming there. So that's an import that we haven't included. So at the top, I'm going to say from Django.com import settings. 
So now that should be fine. So now if we refresh this, now it says the selected membership is Enterprise. If I go back to Memberships, select Professional, now it's Professional. So now we actually want to show the Stripe form here beneath this paragraph tag and we can actually add one more thing which is the monthly membership price. So we can say price and then display the selected membership and then access the monthly price and we'll just put your dollars in front of that and we could make it strong and close that off and then put a small tag and inside the small we'll just put uh, slash month so now if we check that's all working and then go here refresh we get dollars per month so let's just go and see if so it's just price not monthly price so we just put here price and now if we go back and refresh now we see $15 per month cool so now we actually want to display the stripe form so if we go to the just Django github repository and then the shopping cart uh, repository here you can navigate to shopping cart the app templates the shopping cart folder inside templates and then checkout.html and here is where you can actually just copy the code straight so here from the collapse stripe the that has this ID of collapse stripe then we want to copy pretty much all of this right down all the way so all the way from this script I'm going to go and copy all of that and then I'm going to come back for this button so in here I'm going to put some space paste all of this in over here so this is what this looks like and then we want this button as well so I'm going to copy that and we'll just put the button there cool so this is this should all be working we probably need some CSS as well so if we go back into the shopping cart project and then go to static and CSS we're going to need this checkout CSS as well so we can just copy all of that and inside the project we'll create a static folder so we'll just say new folder and call it static and then inside static we'll create another new folder and call it CSS and then a new file and save it as the checkout.css and then we'll create another folder in here and called it JS for JavaScript and a new file and save it as checkout.js and then we'll need the JavaScript from shopping cart as well so in, inside static JS this JavaScript file we will then just copy all of this and then paste that all there and now inside the project settings I just want to confirm the name of the static root so I'm going to change static I'm going to rename it to be static root and then inside the terminal I'm going to run manage.py collect static and then run the server again and we can close settings we can go into the membership payment and then say load static and now everything should be working more or less so we've got stripe loading from there we've got our static loading JavaScript checkout and the only thing we will need now is if we go back to the template so if we go down to shopping cart and then templates shopping cart and then checkout we're going to need the link to the style sheet 
So here I'm just going to add that in right there and then we'll figure out how to deal with that in a second. So now if we check everything is working and if we go back and refresh this, now it seems it's all working. We've got this checkout with a credit card and then once the actual form loads, then we can enter the, the information here and then the toggle button works as well. So just to finish this membership payment HTML, we're going to cut these scripts and put them at the bottom of the file after all of the HTML. And then just to style things a little bit better, I'm going to take this div of the Stripe token and I'm going to place it outside this div here. And then I'm just going to save that. And now if we were to put some dummy data inside here, and then submit, then the actual form token would display up here and would be in full view. So that just clears that up. And now we can actually take a look at the Stripe API, which we'll need for our view. So to clear things up, let's just close the URLs, the payment, the checkout CSS, and then the JavaScript. We will want to put our Stripe uh, publishable key inside here. So Let's just leave that for now. So here inside the API, we want to scroll down and the things that we want to actually take a look at are the tokens and then the actual customers and then these objects that we created earlier in the dashboard, which are the products, plans, and the subscriptions. So let's start with the tokens. So the token is actually what we are creating inside our JavaScript. We're creating, Stripe is actually doing that for us. It's creating a token by taking the card and then uh, handles all of that. So we don't actually deal with any of the actual credit card information. It, it processes all of that and then creates a token for us, which is then uh, what we use to bill the client um, in our backend. And so this is actually quite important because uh, we use the token in actually creating a subscription. So if we go down to the subscriptions and we go to create a subscription and click on Python as the language, then we see here it's simply just importing Stripe, setting the API key, and then creating a subscription object by saying Stripe subscription dot create, and then passing in a customer and then inside an, uh, a list of items, we pass this plan um, and then the plan ID. And if you remember, we created those plan IDs already inside our Django admin. And so all we need to do is then just pass that in, but then how are we billing the person? So that's the real question. If we just pass in the customer object right now, if we go into the admin, and if we go to the user memberships, there's nothing that's linked to the token. There's no credit card information. It just has a Stripe customer ID. And that was created by default uh, inside our models of the user membership. So down here in this post save signal, it's creating the Stripe customer and it's only passed in the email. There's no credit card information at all. So the question then is really, what, what do we pass in to build a customer? And so this is why it's quite important to read through the documentation um, to actually understand that. So billing, which is optional, uh, would be charged automatically. And so what that means is that if we scroll down a little bit, we can see some more information, uh, some more things to pass in. And one of them is source. And it says here the source can either be a token or a source. And we just took a look at the token and that is created when you put your credit card information into Stripe's forms. So we can pass the source in and then that will bill the client uh, once they've submitted the form. So that would actually be what we want to do. We pass in the customer, we have to pass that in because that is required but then we pass in the items and we pass in 
the token. So let's actually get started with that in the next one. Right, so now what we want to do is actually pass our publishable key into our checkout JS. So that's there's one in static and one in static root. So you can choose to just either put your uh, publishable key in here and then collect static or just put it in both of them. So now with that in place, if we take a look at the API, this is what it was, uh, what the example request was. So you have to define your Stripe uh, API key and then uh, actually then just create the subscription object. So I'm just going to copy that and then what we want to do is check if there's a request uh, dot post. So we want to say if the request method is post then we're going to try and do something and we'll create an accept and that will handle in a second and we basically just want to create this Stripe subscription. And before we do that, we actually need to grab the token which is coming from the form. So if we actually go back into the checkout JS and take a look here, then what's happening is we've got this Stripe token handler. And what that's doing is it's appending a child into the form, which is a hidden input. And it's got a value of the token ID and it has a name of Stripe token. So we want to get that. So we're going to say the token is the request dot post of the Stripe token. And then we just create the subscription uh, passing in the customer and the customer is not this random string. The customer is the user membership dot customer ID and that we defined on the model here. So cut Stripe customer ID. So let's just put that there. So we've got the customer and then the plan is not the, this random plan. The plan would be the selected membership dot Stripe plan ID. Again, here in the models, we're grabbing the membership, which is the selected membership and getting the Stripe plan ID. So that's the only item that the user is subscribing to. And then we want to pass in after this list, we want to pass the source, which is this parameter that was optional, but it's necessary to actually build the customer immediately. So this optional source here, and the source is the token, which we're getting from the form. And so once we have that, then we could redirect the user to another view, but we actually want to just quickly put this accept in. So we want to say, accept there's a stripe dot card error as E, and then just say like messages dot info, and we'll pass in the request and say, your card has been declined something like that. So now if we check if this submit will actually work, it probably will work, but the redirect won't. So let's just give this a try and select the membership, pass in the card number and fill in the rest and then just click submit. And there should be a pop up there. But now it says selected membership reference before assignment. And the reason for that is because we have this here, but it is redirecting us back to the select view. And we most likely will want to redirect forward into some kind of update transaction view, which is what we'll do in the next one. So when there's a successful payment, we now want to actually redirect the user. So we're going to just say here, return a redirect. And we'll need to import that at the top from Django's shortcuts and we're just going to redirect a reverse which is then going to take us to a new view which we'll just call memberships update transactions so now if we just go to the urls not inside courses but inside memberships 
then we're going to create a new one here, a new path, and it's just going to be update transactions. And what we want to do is basically pass in a per, some parameters into this. So we're going to need some keyword arguments in here as well. So we'll say that the keyword arguments equals to dictionary. And for the keyword arguments, we basically want to update the subscription or pass in the subscription ID. So I'm going to say the subscription ID, just like that. And the subscription ID is going to be grabbed off of the, the object that's returned from this Stripe subscription. So the way that we do that is actually just by assigning a value to the, so the creation of the subscription object. So we call it subscription and then just get subscription dot ID. And this you can also see on the in the documentation. If you just look at the object, the ID will return, well, the ID. So now we're passing that into the function here, the update transactions, which means we need to put that as some kind of ID that's being passed in here. So we'll put like ID and we'll just call it the subscription ID to be clear. And then we'll say that the name of the function will be the update transactions, which takes in a request and then we'll just pass that in. Import it first, the name is the fun of the function, and then the name of the, of the path will then be update transactions, like that. So that this name is the same as this name. So then when we've got that done, inside update transactions is where we will put the rest of basically all of the, the necessary code to update our own backend. Most of the stuff you won't need to update because it's already in your Stripe dashboard. So we're basically using Stripe to house all the payment information, but you could put some of it here as well. So this view is basically all it's going to do is take in the subscription ID, and then we're just going to create the subscription on our side because that's what this model is for, the subscription model. So we're going to need a few things again. So we'll say user membership equals to get user membership of the request. And then the selected membership equals to the get selected membership of the request using those convenience methods. And then we're going to say that the user membership, which is from this object, dot membership equals to the selected membership and then save it so that's important we basically are now converting the user's membership to have the one that they just paid for and then we'll want to actually create the subscription so we'll say that the sub created equals to subscription dot objects dot get or create this is just a method on the objects and we pass in the user membership equal to the user membership. So that's like the field to filter the results and see if there isn't one, then create it. And so we'll say subscription dot stripe subscription ID equals to the subscription ID being passed into the function. And if we look on the model, that is this field here, Stripe subscription ID. So we'll do that and then we'll say subscription.active equals to true and then subscription.save. And now what we want to do is we want to remove the session selected membership. And the reason for that is because otherwise we're going to, uh, we're going to get some errors saying that it doesn't exist. So what we're going to do here is just put a try statement and we'll say delete the request session selected membership and just say accept and pass. And then we'll just put a messages of info 
with the request and it will say successfully created some kind of membership and then we'll just format it for the selected membership and then we'll return a redirect to the slash courses and so now let's actually go and see if this works so let's go to memberships and we'll select the professional and let's grab that form again or the, the credit card pass that in So now it's saying selected membership reference before assignment, which is here in line 63. So let's just go and see why that's happening. So the reason for that error was because we didn't have a slash on the end of our path here. So if we save this and then refresh the page, and if we just go back and grab that actual credit card number, and just try that again. Now it's, it says success and it is redirecting us and there we see successfully created enterprise membership. So now if we refresh this and check admin, now you can see admin has an enterprise membership. So now that our memberships are working in creating them, we'll probably want to start thinking about a way of the user canceling the membership. So in order for that to, to happen, there'd probably need to be some kind of user profile. And so that's what we're going to do now. We're going to create the user profile. So I'm going to do that actually right at the top of our views. And it's quite a short function here. So we'll just say define profile view and it takes in a request and we want to again use the get user membership here. So I'm going to say user equals to get user membership of the request or rather user membership. And then the user subscription equals to get user subscription of the request. And then you just pass both of those into the context. So we'll say the user membership is user membership and user subscription is user subscription and then just return a render of the request and it will go to memberships slash profile.html and then here we'll just put context so then I'll take the view go into URLs and I'm going to actually just import these like this and then we'll create another URL or another path here and we'll just say path profile and it's the profile view and say the name is profile so now if we create another file inside memberships and we save this as profile.html just like the view then here we can make it extend from base.html inside courses and then create a block content and end block content and then we'll create some stuff inside here so I'll start by creating a div for the class of container and then we'll create another div and this one can have a class of row and then inside here we'll just have an h1 that says my profile create another div and this one will have a class of column small four and then medium four and here we'll just say if the user subscription is not none then we will show some stuff here so 
if it is none, then that means that the user does not have a membership of uh, enterprise or professional. So we'll want to show some stuff. So if it's not none, then we'll show an H4 that says the current membership is the user membership dot membership dot membership type. So going all the way to the membership type field on the membership model. And then we'll just put here a small tag. And inside the small, we can say something like since, and then we'll create a uh, we'll get we'll create a get created date on the, the user. So we'll say user subscription dot get created date, and then we can do some more stuff here. So we'll say we'll say if the user subscription dot active is equal to false. And then we'll do an end if here. Then we'll say that the next payment due is the user subscription. And we'll create another method called get next billing date. And end that paragraph there. And then we could create an A tag. That is basically to cancel the user membership. So we'll say cancel the subscription. And then we'll create an href here, which will take us to some URL. I'll just leave that as a hash for now. And then we'll say else. So the other thing that we'll put in here is a paragraph saying you don't have an active membership plan check them out here and inside there we'll just put an a tag as well and the href can go to a url which we can specify now and the url will be the memberships select and so we've got this end of here and the end of there so now if we check if this works and go to profile, we still need to add the URL. So no, the profile URL is there. Oh, so we'll need to go to memberships slash profile. Now if we go there, then you see a current membership is enterprise since something next payment due is something and then this cancel subscription here. So let's go and create those methods that will get the since and next payment due over here. So inside our models, we want to create some methods on the subscription model. And the first one was the get created date, which is of self. And then the other one is define get next billing date of self. And these were not only just methods there, but they were also properties because we were able to just say get create a date off of the subscription. We didn't need to pass in the parentheses. So we can just make these properties. And so let's actually start with the get created date first. So what we want to do is we want to access the subscription model uh, in our Stripe uh, database, that is, and actually just pull the created date from there. So let's actually take a look at the API. If we get, uh, if we go to subscriptions and then retrieve a subscription, it's simply just Stripe subscription dot retrieve and then the ID. So if we go here and say the subscription equals to Stripe subscription retrieve, and then inside here we would just say self.stripe subscription ID, 
then we could say return subscription ID dot something. And if we take a look at the actual object, then we can check out the cancel at period end, canceled at, that's a timestamp, created is a timestamp, current period end. So there's a lot of these timestamps here. But if we check the actual object created, it's, it's this literal uh, timestamp. And so we'll need to convert this um, into the correct format. So created is the field that we want. So we'll say return created off of the, off of the actual object. But we're going to import date time. So let's do this above Stripe. So we'll say uh, import date time and we'll say from date time import date time and then over here we'll then say date time dot from time stamp and then pass in the subscription dot created so now if we go take a look at what this looks like and refresh the page now it says here yes, since July 5th which is the time that we just created the membership. So now let's actually look at the get next billing date. Again, we'll get the subscription the same way that we did and we'll return something which is a field off of the subscription. So if we check documentation and we look for the current period end, it's the end of the current period that the subscription has been invoiced for, which is a monthly period. So here we'll just say return subscription dot current period end. But again, we'll say date time dot from timestamp because it returns this timestamp as well. So now if we check out what that looks like and refresh, now it says your next payment due is August 5th at 11.14 p.m. And so those are our two methods finished. So now let's create the cancel subscription view so that we can complete the profile. So down at the bottom, we're going to create a new view and that's going to be called the cancel view. So we'll just say, we'll just make it a function based view. So to give us some more space here, we'll say define the cancel subscription. And it just takes a request and basically what we want to do is grab the user subscription so we'll just say user subscription equals to get user subscription of request and then we want to say if the user subscription dot active is false then we want to actually just show them a message and just say messages dot info and say pass in the request and say you don't have an active membership so this is like a just a double check and then just say return HTTP response again of the request meta and then getting the HTTP referrer so going back to whichever URL they just came from otherwise we want to say uh, we actually want to get the Stripe subscription as well. So that's the first place we want to cancel it. So again, we'll use the uh, same way we did on the model. We'll say Stripe subscription dot retrieve and then pass in the user subscription dot Stripe subscription ID. So we, this is the Stripe subscription ID. We're retrieving it and then just say subscription dot delete. And we can check that in the documentation. If we want to cancel a subscription, then all we do is just say uh, retrieve it and then dot delete. So then once it's deleted, then we can actually on our side make the active equal to false and then save it. And then we'll basically grab the free membership type and then reassign that to the user. So then what we'll do is we'll say the free membership is equal to 
the membership objects and we'll filter it where the membership type equals to free and say dot first and then we'll get the user membership as we always do so we'll say get user membership of request and then say the user membership dot membership equals to the free membership and then save then we'll just give another message and say messages.info pass in the request and we'll say successfully cancelled membership and we have sent an email and then just send them we could do some kind of sending an email here if you want to see how you can send emails with Django then our, the, I will link the video to that as well and then we'll just return a HTTP response redirect of the exact same thing here the request meta and that is the cancel subscription view so now we can import that in our our URLs so the cancel subscription view and then create a new path which will be cancel and then we'll just pass in the subscription uh, well the cancel subscription and name this cancel so now if we try this out and refresh our profile so that's loaded correctly if we click cancel subscription we haven't put the url in there yet so in the href we'll put a url and it will go to the memberships cancel now let's refresh this again and if we click cancel subscription now it says user is not defined so that is meant to be user subscription and if we refresh this again and so now it's redirected us back to this kind of page here so that is most likely not what we want to do it we wanted to ref redirect us back to memberships so let's just say it redirects us back to memberships just like that so now let's just improve the look of these HTML pages just a little bit so inside the course list we'll create a div of container and inside the container we'll create another div and make that a row and then inside the row we'll make another one of column small 4 and then column medium 4 and then we'll just copy or, or cut rather all of that stuff inside there there we go so that looks a little bit better now if we go to the course detail we can also improve this one a little bit better so here we can say a again a div of container i'm actually going to just copy all of that and so container and then row and instead of being course list view it'll be course detail view and then we'll have the object title so we'll just cut all of that paste it all there so the object title and we'll just put that inside an h3 tag and then a paragraph tag with the description and then we are looping through this we'll just put this in an ordered list and we'll put the loop inside the ordered list and so in this a tag can then go inside a list item so let's actually see how that all looks so far so if we go to slash courses 
Now I've got course list page. Go to the detail page. Now we see this. And if we click there, we haven't updated the uh, lesson detail. So let's go to lesson detail. And again, now what I'm just going to do is I'm just going to copy the block content onto this page because this isn't anything really that new. So again, a container, lesson detail view. If the object is not none, then we're doing basically a little bit of a check here. So if the object isn't none, then we are uh, showing the title, the description, and then a video. And the video basically has a poster of the object thumbnail URL. And then the source of the video is slash static and then the object video URL, which is just one way to do it. Uh, and then passing in some other parameters here for the video tag. Otherwise, if it is none, then that means the user can't see it. So we show an upgrade membership and then a button to those memberships. So that is that. The next thing I want to do is add some links uh, depending on the page that we're on. So if we go to the base.html, we can see we had added this block post detail link, which is just to add some links um, for the project. So I'm going to copy, I'm going to copy those blocks there, and then above block content, we're just going to paste that there. And inside it, we want to see if the object is not none. And then end if. And inside here, we'll say we'll create a list item and we'll put an a tag. And the href will then go to the object course get absolute URL. And you'll see how this looks in a second. And then we'll put the object dot course dot title to indicate where we're going. And then we'll put another list item just below it. And this one will be the object title. So this is just giving some breadcrumb navigation. So this is looking a lot better already. Now if we go to slash courses and go to Django introduction and then first. So right now we aren't actually a member. So let's just go and change our membership from free to say professional and then come back here. Now the video is showing there. We obviously don't have a video URL for this yet, but you can see here the breadcrumb has first, which is the object title and then Django introduction, which is the course. So it just allows you to navigate slightly better. So that's on this page. We can do the exact same thing on the course detail page. And I'm just going to copy and paste that in so that we don't watch me type that. So here I'm adding the list item of object title. So now if I refresh, then we can see Django introduction there. And it's not a link because you shouldn't have a link to go to the same page. So that is then just fixing up the breadcrumbs and making the display a little bit better. Obviously, the way that we're viewing videos is not the best way. You would use something, uh, some kind of hosting service. And there's other products like Wistia, which I'll link in the description of the video, that are good for serving um, videos with quite nice uh, video display. So to end off the project, let's just add a requirements file to the folder. So to do that, we can just say pip freeze and then requirements.txt, which just pushes the freeze into that file. So now we can see uh, all the packages for this project. And then you can install it with saying pip install r requirements.txt. Now let's run the server and just walk through it one more time to see if everything is working. So here, if we refresh and go back to actually just go to courses, 
and to check our user membership for admin it's a free user and currently the subscription for admin is not active so that means if I go to this course we can see that uh, I have to upgrade the membership I go to checkout memberships and I can pick whichever one I want and if I go to let's say that one I can go back to the previous one so let's say I go back to memberships and go to select enterprise this time then I can enter credit card information which I'm just going to grab from that view and we just pass in all those details submit it and right now I have 285 as the gross volume it's successfully created the membership so if we go back in the admin to check it now I have an enterprise membership the subscription is now active and if we refresh the dashboard now there was now it's 310 so it went up from 285 to 310 so it was um, increased by 25 and we can see here the total is now 75 as well so it definitely is billing it definitely is working obviously it's not perfect yet there's lots that you can add to it like going from one in from one membership to another maybe you want to handle it a little bit better uh, but the point is that it's just a basic skeleton to show you the logic behind uh, this kind of system of subscriptions and uh, how amazing Stripe is in just outsourcing all of that payment stuff and really how easy it is to manage it for us so we only have to focus on really just a little bit of logic of showing the user what they can and can't see. So if you like this series then thanks so much for watching. Leave your comments down below and I hope to see you in future videos.